Hey guys, Mike here again. Um, third, my, my third video of the night. I'm posting up like rapid fire. Um, I, I guess that's easy since I especially, especially as I actually I do these off the you know off the top of my head and off the fly. Um, you know that's not really scripted. Now, I guess that sort of makes for a, um a more honest review. Um, sort of. <coughs> I think it'd be easier if scripted. Um, but that's why my videos vary in such time because I get off track a lot, like right now. So this is gonna be um, a three-issue review of Amazing Spider-Man: Ends of the Earth Part Three, Six Eighty Four. I have the awesome Gabriel the Auto variant for it. Um, Sandman killing this dude. Part Four, even though it says Part Five, Part Four, the Chameleon variant, it's pretty good. And then Ends of the Earth, the one shot featuring Big Hero Sixu and Union Jack. Why did I see Big Hero Sixu? Because they're Japanese, and I thought it'd be funny to say Bigu Hiru Siksu. So see, that's how they write it. I guess they could say Roku. Bigu Hiru Siksu. Alright, whatever. So, Amazing Spider-Man. Um, pretty, pretty awesome arc. Um, you know, after Spider Island and all the stuff that's been going on since then, um, it's been really good. Um, uh. So the book, the issue um, takes off from where it last we last left um, the Avengers or Spidey and the, his Avengers. They got their ass whooped by the Century Six, except Electro's down for the count. He got thrown into space. We, I'm not sure if he's dead or not, but he got thrown into the sky. So you see, um, someone save Black Widow from the Quinj the crash Quinjet, and they're gonna and uh, plan a bomb on it. They're gonna blow it up. You then see um, the Avengers down for the count. They're on the beach, you know, pretty much down, not much. And the Century Six are like, "Yeah, we won. We're awesome." And um, and Spider tries to get, re get regain control of his suit, but Doc Ock won't let him. And the uh, the um, Century Six take the Avengers away. Um, you then see an ex um, uh, an explosion goes off, and Spider Man disappears. Um, for a minute, and you see, um, you know, that he vanished, and you see it's, um, and the Sinister Six leave, and you see that the person who saved them was Silver Sable, um, and that she has an invisible jet, um, she's been using, she's using some of, um, her country's newest technology, and she's like, you know what, Spider-Man, you're the expert on these guys, um, um, you were. I'm following you. I trust you. Um, so you see, cat. Um, you see these guys. They go and they're trying. And Spidey takes apart his suit, and he's gonna try to refix it all. And you see, um, Horizon Labs. They actually got shut down in the last issue by um, Jonah, J. Jonah Jameson, and they're on a, a boat in the ocean. And that they contact him and tell him that, oh, you know, Parker's tech failed you. Um. And they're gonna help Spider-Man whatever they can, cause you know they they they're gonna help save the world. So you see Doc Ock make some demands of the world that um, you know they he wants you know them to build a statue of him and sort of school the Octavius Academy and they want like a billion dollars each for all for everyone and he'll save the world. Um, so. The UN agrees to allow Doc Ock to to use the missile silos all across the world to to shoot satellites into space. Dumbest idea they could do. He's a bad guy, but you know how how diplomats are. I guess they they just they roll over. You know that's what happened for that's how World War Two got started. Um, so you see that Silver Sable's uh, UN um, um, ambassador. He's there and he's recording the message, and he's like, "This is they're gonna go." They're gonna try to stop this from happening. So, so um, they guess they the their first target is the Sahara, and the Sinister Six is gonna be controlling that is um Sandman, and um they this is probably one of the most amazing things I've ever read in term in the comic book. Dan Slott has changed how Sandman's powers work, and he he's given a, an explanation of oh Sandman turns into sand and controls sand. No, he he's pr probably made the way he he's changed the face of Spider-Man 
is amazing in all honesty um so um they decide that they're not looking for he's the way to fight sandman he's gonna be looking for a single grain um of sandman in the in the desert um and they create an app and uh, the project pink hippo for the situation so they get it all set up um and when they arrive in the desert they're at this base and they start just blowing everything up um and they were set up you know um you know it's a trap you know all the satellite pieces they're 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 empty so they get out and you see sandman there and he's huge he's just using the entire desert to um, you know hit you know, Spider-Man's fought, and he tells Spider-Man how he's like, "You fought me, um, you fought me in quarries or um, other places um, or beach, but this is the Sahara Desert. I, like, I can, I'm invinci He's invincible." So Spidey, Black Widow, and Silver Sable, they, um, they, um, Spidey sprays this radioactive isotope or this um, isotope, coloring isotope, onto sa into Sandman's face. And you see that one single grain is is lit up, and Spider-Man, um, Spider-Man started thinking he's like you know every time they fought, Sandman has gained a lot of sand and lost a lot of sand. But how does his powers really work? And he's like, he's deducted that it probably the, there's one constant sand grain that is Sandman. That is his his consciousness, his soul, you know that is him, and that. The rest of the sand doesn't matter as long as they get this grain, they have Sandman and they can take they could trap him. Um, so they follow it and you know it's easier said than done because it's constantly moving in this body because um, you know he's controlling sand and he's just giant and this and the artwork by Humberto Ramos works so well. Um, as I said before, um, Fano Castelli did a great job in his artwork. I really like his. Uh, I really like his artwork, but in this kind of zany fight scenes, like it's Sandman, it's giants, it's sand everywhere, and it's just it's really really awesome to see Humberto Ramos do this kind of epic scale battle. And I'm actually looking forward to Stefano Caselli's um the, his last two issues of the book of this arc, um just because I I can't wait to see how he takes on um this epic style battle, especially um if it's gonna be Doc Ock's last battle. But I'm getting ahead of myself. You see Spider Man. And uh, so these guys, they all they all have cell phones, and they Sandman's about to crush them, and they raise this the this, these cell phones they have, and they hope it works, it, and it says dome. And what happens? Sandman's hands turn into a dome. It doesn't crush them. And you see this 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 sort of scene where their faces are covered in shadow, but you only see that um the the uh, the, the goggles are wearing to to find to follow Sandman's um pieces piece. And it actually looks pretty like menacing. There's like it's like in those like cartoons or anime where the guys is like, Yeah, we turn the tables, we're gonna beat the crap out of you right now. And that's the scene. So you see them um Spider Man gets them out of the dome and you see Silver Sable and Black Widow sort of dick around and you know, um and pick shapes and Sandman's forced to change to these shapes because the basic premise is that um, that, um, that basically this, the Pink Hippo app or project, it's, it's sending a trans, a trans, it's like, it's sending r through waves a signal to the, to the, to Flint Marco's one grain sand, uh, sand, his key sand grain, and it is making him change shape, so he, th he's, he doesn't want to, but he's forced to change shapes, and it's it's apparently causing him pain. And um, you know, Spider-Man then says Kimia, and that's Sandman's daughter, who he's doing this for. Like he wants the money to save his daughter who's sick. Um, so it brings Kimia's face, and then Spider-Man actually rips the one sand sand um, grain out, and then you see Doc Ock tell the UN that you know your your thing is like, you know who's stopping me from saving the world? Spider-Man. The menace. And that's where the issue ends. Um, so this issue, 684. Amazing. Um, Creative team of Dan Sala and Humberto Ramos, Victor Alazaba, and Edgar Delgado. They did an amazing job on this issue. Um, the way they... 
Well, first off with Dan Slott, the way he explains Sandman's powers is just, you know, Sandman, you know, he's he's been a, a, a long-time Spidey villain, but the way he went into it explained is like, you know, he's changed how Sandman's powers work, how he's defined them, like, he's given them specific, he's gone into Sandman's lore and he's rewritten it. He's like, Sandman, he, he controls sand and stuff, but there's one piece of sand that matters. Like, no matter what happens to him, as long as this piece of sand stays intact, he he will live and he can reform and do whatever he wants. And the fact that that is the way is that now writers in the future, if they ever write about Sandman, that's this is something that they they will use as a basis for Sandman. Like, they this is part of the Spider-Man mythos now, and that's the way he's done it is amazing. It's like, I, I never thought that in my time or I guess in uh, growing up um, you know Spider-Man has been set you know Spider-Man has been set comic books have been set but the fact that he can he's coming in and rewriting things and you know setting up this this you know expanding on this universe that's been around for this is 50 years it's pretty awesome so and I said, um, so the story, great story, the way they're continuing this. Spider-Man has been one of Marvel, Marvel's, like, out of all the books they're putting out, Spider-Man has been one of the best ones. Um, it has its ups and downs. Some of the books, as I said, um, get really weird, get okay. But this, this so far, this arc has been pretty amazing. Um, the artwork by Humberto Ramos just helps it because it's just over the top. There's just sand everywhere, this giant Sandman. You see Silver Sable, Spider-Man, and Black Widow jumping all over the place, this zany action. It's pretty awesome. And Stefano Caselli, his artwork is great, but it really doesn't really fit into this sort of situation. So um, 685, um, part 5 on the book, but actually part 4, typo. Um... So by the same creative team, um, these, um, Stefano Caselli actually took a break, and then um, Humbrella Ramos did two issues in the middle. So this actually starts off in North Korea. You see um, the, the the three heroes fighting the rhino, and um, and in the horn that Rhino's equipped with, the new horn, um, it's pierced right through his armor, and Spidey's armor was meant to be able to take a hit from the rhino. Um, so the side that they're fighting him is like, you know what, they, um, and Spider-Man, and Spider-Man tells him, he's like, this is my war, so, but no matter what happens, no one dies, like, I'm saving everyone, even if it's a villain, like, so, you know, Dan Slott's been keeping this trend going that he established with this no one dies rule, um, so Spidey sort of, um, sticks this, um, device that he made for, um, or this, um, this webbing that he made, or something, he sh he hits Rhino with something, and, he, and it, it just electrocutes him, and he's like, you know what, I said no one dies, doesn't mean I can't um, mess him up, so they take him down, and S.H.I.E.L.D. come, come in, and they start, um, um, and they, they, S.H.I.E.L.D. comes, and by international law, they decide to arrest Spider-Man, Silver Sable, and Black Widow, well, these guys, like a bat out of hell, they get out of there, like a bat out of hell, and, um, and you see, um, you know, um, them back in Silver Sable's jet, and it's like they're alone. The entire world's against them. It's three people against everyone. Um, and you see Spider-Man talk to Flint Marco, and they give him a few. Um, they actually to to they decide to interrogate him, and they they fill him, um, they give him some pound a few pounds of uh, silicon. So he could reform into his face, uh, Flint Marco, and he re and using the phone, they're they they're keeping him contained. So they keep him contained as a f as his head, and Silver Sable decides, you know what? She does torture him, and she starts melting him with acid. And eventually, there's only gonna be one grain left, and it's gonna be the key grain to his him. And he doesn't want to die, so he decides to um to squeal. And he thinks he honestly thinks he's the good guy, right, in the situation. He thinks that they're doing the right thing; they're gonna save the world. But Spidey doesn't believe that the Doc Ock is in it. There's another motive in it, and it's not a good one. So um, he decides to tell them, and Spidey tells him, "He's like, you know what? One more second, and he would have cracked. The Spider-Man would have stopped Sable." Um, so Spidey calls Max Modell, and they decide that um, that none of there, no there's no one can apparently figure a way to hack into um, Doc Ock's satellites. 
or um or like you know they can't do anything every attempts have been stopped um and they have almost 200 of these satellites in orbit around the world so spider-man um tells them that um uh, Uh, tells them to stop working on that idea to ch of trying to hack into society because it's not working. And but Max and his team tell them that they're with them regardless of what happens. So you see um, this interview um, of people all over America, all over the world, and it looks like Dan Slott's in one of the panels, um, or I guess someone who's sort of supposed to be Dan Slott. I don't know is that that guy right there, top le left or top corner. Um, I think that's supposed to be Dan Slott. Um, and then you see a person in France, and the person in Mexico, I think, is actually supposed to be Humberto Ramos. I think it's pretty funny that they drew them, um, Humberto drew them into the comic books. But you see everyone talking, it's like, you know what? Um, and um, C.B. Um, Bileski, um, one of uh, Marvel's uh, talent finders, is actually there. He actually wrote a couple books, too. But um, you just see all these people, all the world, is like, let's go, Ock. He's going to save the world. And Doc Ock is moves on to, decides to move on to the next phase of the plan and it uh move on to the plan. Chameleon and Mysterio move off. And you know, regardless of even though they got their cut of the money already, they're get they're professionals, they have to see this through to the end. So Rhino and Doc Ock um are talking and Rhino wants what he really wanted. I think I'm pretty sure it's him out of the suit. He doesn't want to be the Rhino anymore. Um, but he's gonna, Doc Ock promises to make that happen. And then, um, to, to make sure that his, um, because their ranks are thinning, as he says, you know, Sandman's down for the Council, Electro's gone, he recruits people from all over the world to fight for him. And you can see, um, Crossbones on one, Titanium Man, um, a whole bunch of villains. Um, we then, oh, Zulu, you're saying long, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, so we then see Spider-Man and his... Spider-Man and Sable um, and Black Widow on in their plane, and they get contacted by Titanium Man. And he, even though he's a villain, he, he his priority is to Russia first. Just like, um, yeah, he's a loyal patriot in Russia, and he contacted Black Widow because Black Widow once again is Russian, and you know, t you know, he's trying to protect Russia first. Um, so Spidey makes a call to all heroes all over the world, whoever can help. He's like, the Avengers have uh, been captured, the X-Men and the Defenders and the FF of Off-World. It's up to us to save the world. And there's a whole bunch of people, Union Jack, um, Big Hero 6, Titanium Man. And these guys, um, um, they always go off to a speech, but... Um, and you know he's worried. He he he's pretty sure that you know he doesn't know if they're gonna win. And Silver Sable seems like um, and Spider Man about to have this this sexy time moment. He he made a he said something he's like you know uh, we're gonna win this. I promised her. And Silver Sable asks her. And Spider Man sort of says you know I, I can't do this. And he's like you know. And say it's uh, it's about Mary Jane. Obviously, uh, I love Dan Slash bringing Mary Jane back. I love Mary Jane so much. Um, so you see um, New York, and she, um, the cops are suddenly um, shuffling people along, and Jameson is like, you know what? I don't care what Octavius is doing. This is New York. We're going to be standing no matter what. And MJ knows that Peter is going to save them, and that he's going to get the hero's welcome because he deserves it. And she knows what's in it. She she knows her part in that. So you see heroes all over the world fighting. Um, and that's what I'm gonna be doing in the end of the Earth one shot. I'm gonna do it in a separate video because this video is really long. All over the world fighting um, the Sinister Six or and their allies. Um, and you see Spidey and these and his team about to go. They get into a a base, a abandoned base, and it's empty. And Doc Ock actually. Um, actually, um, hits the lights and, um, the electric, and he, he activates it all over the world and, um, half the planet is on fire and he destroyed half the planet and Spider-Man we failed. So this issue was actually, once again, amazing work. Um, there's not much action except for the beginning, but as I said, 
Dan Slott's been doing such a great job. Him, Humberto Ramos, Stefano Caselli, and um, uh, Giuseppe Camicoli, regardless of whether I don't like his art or not. They've been doing a great job on Spider-Man, and this is no exception. This issue, I gave issue, um, I actually didn't rate the issue, um, part three, but part four, great job. It's just tying so much, there's so much stuff happening, but it's easy to follow. You know, Spider-Man's making this call, it's him against the world, and, you know, you know, it's this is what Spider-Man always has been. Regardless if he has allies, you know, he's outgunned, outmatched, and he's still going to try to find a way to win. Um, and I love the fact how um, Slot doesn't forget that that's who Spider-Man is, you know. He's always going to stand up regardless of what happens. And I love the fact he's bringing back Mary Jane. I love Mary Jane so much. Brand new day. Worst. Brand new day and one more day. Worst Spider-Man ever. I hate that. If you guys don't know what it is, I'll make a video. You should tell me. I'll make a video about it. Um, I hate those that arc so badly. But uh, Enter the Earth four, three and four. Um, so six eighty four and six eighty five. They each get, they each are five stars in my opinion. They both get five stars. These books have been amazing, and this arc has been amazing. Like Avengers X Men is getting all the hype. In all honesty, Ends of the Earth deserves the hype. Like people should be reading this 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 book and it sucks that um, it goes to the wayside and people overlook it sometimes but it's 50th anniversary I'm really looking forward to what they do this uh this um I think the July August I believe that's when oh, it was in August maybe it's soon not much else thanks for watching this guys I'm redoing the one shot in a separate video this video is actually really long because I got off track but um thanks for watching you know leave a comment tell me what you think about it and have a good time have a good weekend